getting a lot of this. So it may seem like uh, to some of the viewers that this is a very common question. Some of you might actually even be able to recite the answer verbatim, but um, it's still an important question because we keep getting asked this and there's a lot of people out there that don't have the answer. And uh, December does seem to be a very strange time when it comes to things like this because we've received a substantial increase in this question. Um, so, uh, so Nick, um, there was a Vanna. Vanna was going to move out at the end of January. But then mid-month, 14th of Jan, landlord came, removed safety gates, all door locks, uh, cut the electricity and water. And now, it sounds like Van is still on the property, but yeah, so you're safe with safety gates and the door locks and water and electricity. And he has children and you need to know what he does under these circumstances as a tenant. Perfect. Um, so... Uh, as you said, we've done this. We've done this topic many times, but as it's uh, 2023, we'll we'll go from the very beginning again. So uh, I'm going to assume, for the purposes of of the question, that Werner is a is a tenant in the particular property. He says he's moving out at the end of January. Under what circumstances, he doesn't particularly say. But irrespective, what what this comes down to is what we call spoliation within our law. So. It's an established principle of South African law that no individual within the law is entitled to take the law into their own hands and enforce the law without some sort of judicial oversight um, or a court order. Okay, so what this means is, you know, you can't just decide that that you're going to take the law into your own hands and do whatever you want, um, you know, and and uh, just enforce the law in your own particular way. We have processes for this to happen, which generally involve judicial oversight to approve the actions of a person to be taken and also to uh, give instructions to particular individuals to make um, whatever steps the court wants, which is why we have the sheriff, okay, who, who affects eviction. So in these particular circumstances, obviously, we know that uh, if, if you want to uh, get an unlawful occupier out of a particular premises, and I'm not saying that Vern is an unlawful occupier, um, just for, for general purposes, you need to approach a court. You have to get a court order. That is the process within South Africa. There is no other way to do it. Okay. In circumstances where you take the law into your own hands, it is an action called spoliation. Okay. Now, our law protects against spoliation. Our law does not want uh, individuals to take the law into their own hands. And what Werner has said here would clearly form uh, an act of spoliation. So what spoliation protects against is the possession that one person has of a particular thing within the law. So there's that old adage, which uh, possession is nine-tenths of the law. This is, this is the one thing that we're talking about. The law will protect one's possession of a particular thing, okay, until a court makes a determination that perhaps they should be dispossessed of that particular thing, okay? So when it comes to spoliation, and this is the, the, the good old adage that every attorney learns while he's at law school, that spoliation will protect someone's possession of something, even a thief. Okay, so yeah. if a thief has yeah. something, it can be given back to them. It doesn't matter. Um, the law will protect it and give that thing back to that person until such time as a court makes a determination, says, no, you're not entitled to that particular item. So in this particular case, Werner is obviously he's in occupation and in possession of the, of the premises. Okay, for whatever reason, his landlord has now come and removed safety gates uh, and, and locks and cut the electricity and water. Okay, these are uh, these are steps that are now detracting from the possession that Werner has of the property. Okay, now not all of these are you know he kicked him out of the property. Some of these things are incidental to his possession. Okay, but certainly the act of cutting locks or or removing locks or whatever the the, the case is. And in particular, a, a disconnection of water, which we must remember, water is a human right in terms of our constitution. Um, and that is something very serious to have, have terminated, especially as, as Werner says in the circumstances where there are children on the property. Um, these are certainly acts of spoliation, which, which a court is not going to, uh, going to approve. So what can Werner do in the circumstances? Well, it's quite simple. Um, this is one of the circumstances and, and a spoliation application is a an application by its very nature that is urgent within our law, 
Okay. So what you would normally do is obviously uh, you, you would approach attorney or if you're not going to approach attorney, you could approach a court direct. Okay. Um, and basically you're going to raise a spoliation application. Generally that would involve the first thing your attorney would do is send a letter, say to the landlord, listen, you have dispossessed our client by cutting the electricity, the water and changing the locks. We are demanding that you uh, restore their possession to them immediately, failing which we're going to approach a court for a spoliation uh, order. And a spoliation order, as I say, is by its very nature urgent. So your attorney can raise a, a spoliation application. What they will do is they will ask for a disposal of the general rules of court, okay? And they can bring the application on an urgent basis. And uh, when we say urgent basis, we mean extremely urgent basis, okay? Um, I have seen these particular apps. I was in possession of a property. I was using it as I was. And this person has now come and disturbed my possession of that particular property. And I want to be put back in possession of it as I was before they had taken those actions. Okay. It's very important to understand in, in circumstances and, and a lot of our clients that come with regards to spoliation, you know, uh, we obviously work uh, on behalf of the landlords a lot of the time and they say, well, you know, this person has no rights to the particular property uh, and, and they need to, to vacate the property. But a spoliation application has absolutely nothing to do with one's rights and the courts will never consider rights in a, in a spoliation application. It deals only with possession and the court will uh, inevitably restore possession until such time as it makes a, a further determination down the road whether that possession must be given up or not. Um, but for, for the purposes of, of just keeping the status quo, uh, they'll order this. And as I say, th this can be done on an extremely urgent basis within a couple of hours if you have a, a, an attorney who's clever. Um, and generally, it's, it's not a difficult uh, order if there has been conduct that uh, Werner's talking about here. So, so my suggestion, Werner, you know, if, uh, if you can approach an attorney as quickly as possible, um, at least they can they can get a letter out to the landlord um, where they are demanding that possession is restored. You obviously you're only staying in, in the property till the end of the month, but uh, a period of two weeks without water is simply you know simply problematic um, for anyone. So I'd approach attorney as quickly as possible, or alternatively you can approach a, a magistrate's court to to try and run the matter. The uh, the the clerks at the magistrate's court are aware of these particular matters and they generally assist people who, who walk in. Um, but obviously that's a, that's a process of bringing the case by yourself, which is obviously a little bit more difficult in the circumstances uh, as your attorney is going to know exactly what to do and, and how to expedite the process as quickly as possible. Awesome. Yeah, that's absolutely, yeah, that's, that's, um, that's perfect. Um, and it is it, it is just one of those things. So landlords beware and uh, tenants, yeah, it, 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 like know your rights. And I suppose it just basically comes down to that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Thanks so much, Perfect. Nick. Andrew, have thank a great you. Life. Cool. Good luck with the load shedding. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. You too. Good luck to sure. us all. All right. See you next Good. week, Bruno. Cheers. Cool. Bye.